children chemistry in chemistry we study lots of chemical reactions and what are chemical reactions that too we have learnt in the very first video and the idea got reinforced in our second video today we are moving on to the third part of the first chapter the making and breaking of the combination of atoms is the main aspect of chemistry what is a chemical reaction chemical reaction is the making or breaking of different atoms to produce new substances i think all of you are very clear crystal clear about this particular idea now all the chemical reactions have been mainly classified into four types depending on how do the reactions take place today we will open up our studies as far as this perspective is concerned what are those four different kinds of chemical reactions some of you might have gone through the textbook already one is chemical combination two substances come together two or more they all combine with each other and a new substance gets formed chemical combination as opposed to that we have chemical decomposition one substance is there it gets divided into two or more substances we call it as chemical decomposition then we have displacement there is one substance when another substance comes close which is strong a strong substance its strength is more as far as its ability to react with different substances is concerned it breaks that substance pushes one radical out or one part out and this will go and get session there ab plus c will become cb plus b b is pushed out or a is pushed out now such reactions are displacement reactions where substances are displaced then we have the fourth we learned about chemical decomposition now double decomposition two substances come together say one is ab and the one is c symbolically let us represent now ab and cd will replace their radicals they will get their radicals displaced how ab will become ad b cd is there that will become cb so b and d got exchanged ab plus cd there b and d got exchanged and both the substances will be new substances now okay i gave you a birds idea of it we'll be going into the details now to start with we have chemical combination reaction every time we need to write chemical we know it so we have written combination reaction two substances combine the definition is very simple two substances combine and new substance or new substances get formed this is what we call as chemical combination reaction the best example what we can remember is hydrogen plus oxygen gives water hydrogen and oxygen both these are gases both are gases these two 
gases they react with each other they come into a bonding and a new substance a liquid got formed that liquid is water at normal temperature water is a liquid so we say liquid water we get water water has two elements embedded in it one is hydrogen and the other is oxygen so this is a very good example 2H2 plus O2 gives 2H2O. So hydrogen and oxygen are in the ratio 2 is to 1 by volume. 2 is to 1 by volume. A very clear, distinct chemical combination reaction. Come to the next. You have some carbon with you. Carbon. Or you may have something to burn. You may be wood to burn. Now ultimately it is carbon that burns. Carbon combines with oxygen in the air. It can be a piece of coal even. Coal is also carbon. It burns. Carbon combines with oxygen. It gives CO2. Carbon dioxide. C plus O2 gives Carbon dioxide symbolically we represent it as CO2. <coughs> we'll move on to the third now. In the very first video itself, I had explained it once. Anyhow, we repeat, let us repeat it because it is a chemical combination reaction. We have quick line here, quick line. By mining, we can get quick line. Quick line is all. You cannot handle it in your hand. It burns. Quick line will always be hot. Even if you want to keep it, you have to keep quick line in bottles with airtight lid. Airtight lid. You can't expose it to air. If you expose Quick line to the air surrounding, it undergoes reaction. There is a chemical combination. What is that with which it combines? It combines with water in the air, or I can call it as moisture. Moisture in the air. Calcium oxide combines with water in the air. It starts getting heated up and you will have calcium hydroxide. In the rural side they do, they bring calcium oxide in bags, put it in big vessels, then add water. Cold water itself is enough. The moment the cold water comes in contact with quick lime, CaO or calcium, oxide it starts convert, getting converted into calcium hydroxide CaOH twice that we call it a slicket line it is slicket line here heat gets given out in this reaction heat gets generated it's explosion almost. If CMO what you have got is very strong, the reaction will be quite explosion. You can't stand even close to what is happening there. It's spurs even. This is how we get calcium hydroxide. The same reaction will be able to continue it further. Now this CaOH2, CaOH twice, if you add more water, more water, make it thinner, you can make the quantity increase. Usually masons, they use water to dilute calcium hydroxide. They dilute it. It's a white liquid. 
it is used as whitewash to make the walls become bright white after plastering the wall if you want to make the wall white it's a old practice now they have started bringing all paints and painting them but if you go back by 50 years or 100 years everyone in the rural areas they used to use calcium hydroxide make it thin and use it for white washing walls the white wash you apply takes about 2 to 3 days to become absolutely white and shiny it starts shining it will start absorbing co2 from the air there's another reaction now calcium hydroxide starts drawing in co2 from air and again it's a combination reaction one more and calcium carbonate it has a bright white finish look let's see that calcium hydroxide plus co2 it has taken carbon dioxide from the air and that has turned into calcium carbonate ca ca oh twice here so co2 one o is taken from here then plus co3 then the rest of the atoms which are there it's they are all here in 6 h2o plus energy you know how to balance you might play and check it's a balance all the equations given here they are all well balanced calcium carbonate will be bright white that's why calcium hydroxide will not be that bright the day you white wash the wall give two or three days time day by day brightens because calcium hydroxide is got converted into cacl3 okay we will move to the next one an important reaction this is the reaction what you see in photosynthesis in plants this two we have discussed once so i will not go on to the balancing part we will only discuss the equation c6h12o6 photosynthesis over glucose is got formed now using that glucose plant has to get energy we have not discussed photosynthesis here we have only discussed what happens next to that so c6h12o6 plus 6co2 in our body to glucose which is there in the tissues glucose will reach all parts of the body through blood now there oxygen will be made to reach through the blood vessels from the lungs going to different parts of the body that is 6 o2 we take in oxygen when we breathe we take in oxygen oxygen is absorbed by hemoglobin present in the red blood corpuscles in the blood and the red blood corpuscles move with the blood to the various parts of the body to the tissues their glucose is already there which has come from the digestive system and reaction starts glucose plus oxygen gives us energy why do we require this reaction to get energy for the various activities we do right from morning till evening or even when we are sleeping various activities will be going on in the body so we need energy energy is a continuous requirement of the various tissues in the body heart has to pump blood we have to lift heavy weights we have to walk to the school get back we have to write we have to think we have to do mathematic problems we have to talk to others dance learn everything whatever is there you add up everything these are all these do require energy from where do we get energy we get it from the glucose we take in how do we take in glucose we take in through the various edible items we do eat it can be from vegetables it can be from the rice wheat jowar ragi and all these or it can be in the form of 
biscuits and such ready-made stuffs. It may be from the meat you take, meat, flesh. Various sources are there. How we get glucose? Or you may have even take, you may even take two spoons of glucose and put it in the mouth. If you are suffering from fever or something and if you run down of energy, you take in glucose. Or if you run a 400 meters race, just as you complete the race with all the force you have available in your body, just after the race, what do you do? Glucose will be there ready. You take two spoons of glucose, put it in the mouth and have a half a glass of water because glucose is dissolved in water. Within minutes, you recover. You recoup. You get back the energy you have lost. Let's see now once again. In the light of all this, glucose, C6, H2O6. A little complex. It's form. Plus 6 CO2 gives energy. What are the byproducts? Byproducts are 6 CO2. 6 CO2, carbon dioxide, you know well, as we breathe in, take in oxygen, we give out carbon dioxide. 6 CO2. Plus 6 molecules of water. Now, CO2, what gets produced? as energy is generated, it goes out of the body, goes out of our lungs as we exhale, exhale. As we exhale, there will be water component too in the form of moisture. Just if you take a mirror and just hold it in front of your mouth and do twice or thrice, immediately you see smoke there, a layer of water getting covered. From where did it come? That moisture came from the Lungs. So carbon dioxide and moisture, they are the byproducts and energy is the necessary requirement that the body has. This is how the body generates energy. Now in all these reactions you find chemicals coming together, atoms coming together or atom and molecule coming together, compound, a compound and atom coming together and reaction takes place when you have the products. Reactants act with each other and products are there. Here they combine, reactants combine. So we call all these reactions as combination reactions. We close in here, we move on to the next type of reaction. Decomposition reaction. Let's take the first example. Let's just learn the equation here. I won't do this uh, experiment as such. 2FeSO4. This is called as ferrous sulfate. Ferrous stands for iron. Iron sulfate or ferrous sulfate. On heating, we have to heat it. Take a few crystals of FeSO4 in a test tube and heat it well. When you heat it, it gets divided into three different chemicals. Ferric oxide, that is Fe2O3 plus SO2 plus SO3. We can say ferric oxide plus sulfur dioxide plus sulfur trioxide. See, one chemical has got divided into three different chemicals Fe2O3, ferric oxide, then sulfur dioxide, then sulfur trioxide. A beautiful example for a decomposition reaction. It gets decomposed. Here, two Fe, we have Fe2, SO4, SO2 is here. SO3 is here, one more has come from here. So 2 Fe, SO3, yes, two S's are there, one S is here, one S is here. You just sit and work out. You know the rules as to how you can solve it. We will move on to the next now. CaCO3, calcium carbonate. We have already learnt about it under 
chemical combination. We are on the reverse path now. Reverse path. Then the chemicals went on getting added up. Now chemicals are getting separated out. CaCO3, calcium, calcium carbonate. I told you, you apply calcium hydroxide, whitewashing the wall. In villages you see mud walls they build or brick walls they build, plaster it. After plastering it, they whitewash it to make the walls look bright white. In two or three days after whitewashing, the walls stand bright white because calcium hydroxide would have got transferred into calcium carbonate. Now we are on the reverse path. We have taken calcium carbonate here. We have taken in a test tube. We heat it. Heat it well. When we heat it, this gets transformed into calcium oxide. Calcium oxide. Quick line. Whatever water content is there in CaCO3 as molecules of water that we don't write here usually, they are all given into the surrounding air and as H2O gets removed, water gets separated, it turns back into calcium oxide. That is quick line plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is got separated. Carbon dioxide gets left or released into the surrounding air. So once again you have got the quick line here. In, under chemical combination we started with quick line. Quick line got translated into slicate line or calcium hydroxide. From calcium hydroxide we got C calcium carbonate. Now we are going in the reverse path. Now this reaction you can call it as thermal decomposition because Heat plays a vital role. Unless you heat, CaCO3 will not be divided into the respective compounds. Thermal. Thermal means related to heat. Thermodynamics. Dynamics related to heat. This is also thermal decomposition. We will move on to one more. This is lead nitrate. Lead nitrate. Pb is lead. Two molecules are here. NO3 is nitrate. NO3 twice. Pb, NO3 twice. This is nitrate. Lead nitrate. Take it in a test tube, some crystals. Heat it well. As you heat it, you will get lead oxide. Lead nitrate will get converted into lead oxide. And NO2 gets produced. Four molecules of NO2 are here. You have brown fumes getting produced. From the test tube which you are heating, you see the brown fumes coming out. Those brown fumes are of nitrogen dioxide or peroxide, we call it. NO2 plus O2. Oxygen 2 gets emitted, generated. So this reaction is a reaction where you will find a beautiful example for decomposition. One compound gets resulted into in three different compounds. Lead oxide, nitrogen peroxide and oxygen. We will come to the fourth one. Again an interesting one. You have taken silver chloride here. AG is, stands for argentum. Argentum is a Greek term. Argentum, AG. AG is silver. Silver chloride. We have taken silver chloride. It is almost white, bright white. As you heat it up, it turns into grey color. Slowly it starts turning into grey color and from AgCl, Ag gets separated and chlorine gas that gets separated. This can happen only in the presence of sunlight. So you have to take a watch glass, put some crystals of silver chloride and keep it in the sun. Keep it for about 10-15 minutes and the chemical reaction starts. You get silver and chlorine. 
silver and gold. As it happens in the presence of sunlight, we write the word sunlight just above the arrow mark to make it very specific. Now we come to one more important example wherein under combination you saw hydrogen and oxygen coming together and water molecules get formed. Here water molecule we have when we get it electrolyzed we pass electric current through it it gets divided into hydrogen and oxygen. One compound gets divided into two elements in their atomic form hydrogen and oxygen. You know when they get formed the ratio of volume should be 2 is to 1 hydrogen will be 2 oxygen is 1. When you don't write anything here it means it's 1. We don't mention it then. So by volume you have hydrogen twice the quantum of oxygen. To get all this done, we have a beautiful gadget which we can set. That can be called as voltmeter. Voltmeter. Now here we have the voltmeter. See, this is a glass vessel. A glass vessel. We have taken water in that. We have taken water. At the bottom, there are two holes. Two holes are there at the bottom here. And we have inserted two electrodes through that. Through the two holes, two electrodes, carbon electrodes have been introduced. You can see those electrodes here at the center. Inside the test tubes you see black structures. Black rod-like structures standing erect, standing straight. They are carbon electrodes. What we have actually taken here, they are electrodes made out of graphite. You all know well, graphite is also a form of carbon. Carbon exists in nature in varieties and varieties of forms. One of the key forms is graphite too. You use graphite for writing. In your pencils, what you call as lead pencils, if the pencil is broken, you say, oh, lead is broken. Actually, it is not lead. But people do use the word lead. Lead is very strong. It won't break like that. Lead won't write on paper. It is actually graphite. But the misnomer we all use is lead. So next time when it gets broken, it say, Oh, my graphite is broken, it will say, and get it set a sharp in the pencil. Okay, whatever it be, remember now the graphite in your pencil is a very good conductor of heat and electricity. And here we have used graphite rods. As we pass electricity through them, we call them as electrodes. Now, they have pierced through the glass, then the plastic down below, through that, they have come here, right to the front portion. We have the two keys here, two keys, metallic keys, to which wires have been attached. And those wires, they have been fixed to a 9 volt cell, a 9 volt Cell. So this is functioning now, but water, if you have taken pure water, you know well, pure water is not a good conductor of electricity. Electricity will not pass through water. So what should you do? Take dilute HCl, add a few drops, we have added, or cut a lemon and a few drops of lemon you will add. Lemon is citric acid. The moment you add lemon, it becomes citric acid, dilute citric acid. And citric acid mixed water, it becomes a very good conductor of electricity. So electricity from the anode 
moves through, moves into water through the electrode, and then it traverses in water, comes to the cathode, and then again it gets back through the wire to the negative terminal of the cell, and that completes the circuit. Now, if we see here, electricity, it is in the circuit. It is getting conducted through water. Here, over the two electrodes, you have to put two test tubes filled with water, filled with water inward. Fill the test tubes with water and invert them over the electrodes. One on the anode electrode, one on the cathode electrode. The two electrodes are called as anode and cathode. The one which is positive connected to the anode of the cell, you call it as anode positive. The other one is negative, it is called as cathode. Now, keep the experiment just like that. Test tubes are filled with water. Water, it gets mixed with the water here, so it is a good conductor. Now, you will see bubbles coming up. You can see bubbles coming up very well both in the test tube connected with the cathode electrode and the one connected with the anode electrode. Hydrogen will collect, get collected on the cathode electrode and oxygen will get collected on the anode electrode and we already discussed hydrogen will be twice the amount of oxygen. Usually whenever you conduct the experiment, quantity of oxygen will be a little less. It will not be to the expected level because hydrogen does not get dissolved in water. It goes and gets collected. Part of oxygen that is produced there will get dissolved in water itself. Oxygen is heavier than hydrogen. Bubbles too do not rise up easily. They all get stuck here, you see the oxygen bubble stuck up inside. For that, you have to make the two test tubes almost airtight at the bottom. If you make them absolutely airtight, then hydrogen and oxygen both will not get collected. So there should be some let off. But the let off at the bottom, you should get it reduced as much as possible to control the generated bubbles and see that they get collected in the two test tubes. So at the bottom, don't leave it absolutely open with some wax or something, you can close it and leave only one end open because water should get refreshed outside and inside and the bubble should be able to spring up. The circuit should be on to, with the practice, if you do it, you will be. Now where do we get, should we purchase all these, you may ask. It's very simple. You go for a plastic mug. That's why we in the diagram we are showing it as a plastic mug. See, this is a plastic mug. Again, follow it up. It's easy. In the examination, you need not draw that. You can draw this. In your textbook too, most of the textbook illustrations, you see a plastic mug. The intention is not that you should use plastic mug. The intention is you can do with a plastic mug in your house. Do the experiment and it will be a grand success. And you will see, be able to see the electrolysis of water which is tried out in big labs right on the stool in your house or table in your house. See here, the mug is there. You see the handle to here. And here we have made two holes. Two holes. Take a needle and make a hole. And there you can have two rubber stops. Small pieces of rubber. Eraser you can cut, cut the eraser, bring it to that shape. It should be a little bigger than the hole. It can fix well. If you are rubber, you cut rubber. One piece here, one piece here. Through that, you fix the electrodes now. One electrode is here, another electrode here. You see, graphite rod, anode 
written in this electrode here, I have written it as graphite rod. Here one more graphite rod. Now see that here you close it absolutely. There should not be any leakage, you know. The rod has moved through the plastic mug. There can be leakage. So you use any chemical what is available in the market and seal it. Seal that part. What can be used? Wax. Wax you can use or bee wax or sealing material or certain gums too you need. You get, you can put the gum within 3 or 4 seconds it dries up and it gets absolutely fixed. It's left to you. Now to these graphite rods you connect wire and connect it to a 6 volt or a 9 volt battery or you can use 4 battery cells of 1.5 volts and connect them or if you have a step down transformer step down transformer in the house use that the 220 volts current what you have in the house you get it step down to 9 volts that's the job of the step down transformer use it if you keep doing all these experiments over the year one by one you come across a lot of experiments and then electricity too you can have a step down transformer of your home so you save a lot of electricity you save your expenditure on battery cells purchase of battery cells because battery cells do cost quite a bit it's complete here we have taken water, you have added a few drops of hydrochloric acid dilute or you add few drops of citric acid from a lemon, cut lemon. So this is a good conductor of electricity. You will switch it on, switch it on, it starts functioning. You see the bubbles coming up here. Bubbles coming up here, bubbles coming up here. So over the anode, you see oxygen getting current. Over cathode, you find hydrogen getting current. Wait for a few hours. Set it, leave it for functioning. You see over the cathode, you will have double the amount of gas collected compared to the amount of gas collected on the anode. It will be in the ratio 2 is to 1. When we write 2 is to 1, first of all we mention hydrogen, then oxygen. So quite a few things you learn. It's an experiment on electricity, conductivity, experiment on anode and cathode and electric circuit functioning. You are uh, decomposing water into hydrogen and oxygen. And maybe a drop of water may get spent on that. See, if this room is filled up with hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio 2 is to 1 and pass electric current, electricity and convert it into water, you will have just a small drop of water. So when water gets transformed into hydrogen and oxygen, it occupies a huge volume. Huge volume. This Drawing is very simple. Take a sheet of paper, draw it once, twice or thrice, seeing and without seeing. The experiment is also very simple. It is very well given in my textbooks. You can go through that. I have not prepared any separate notes for that. Or on the internet you can ask for experiment on electrolysis of water. So what takes place here is electrolysis. It is written here. 2H2O on electrolysis, it gives us two hydrogen atoms and one atom of oxygen or 2H2O if you have 2H2 plus O2 when you bring it to equilibrium. Otherwise you can only say water gives hydrogen plus oxygen there being the ratio 2 is to 1. So this is an important experiment in the field of chemistry, a beautiful example which you should not and you won't 
for it as far as decomposition reaction is concerned. You need not mention all this. You can straight away come to electrolysis and you can write. Or take any of these examples to illustrate and exemplify it. Okay? I feel you should try it out, try it out in the house. We cannot become students of chemistry unless we become at least at the basic level scientists. I will call you a scientist if you take up the endeavor of preparing your own voltmeter and taking hydrogen and oxygen from by the electrolysis of water from water. In the next video, we will take up the third and the fourth types of chemical reactions. That is chemical displacement and chemical double decomposition. And also we will take up oxidation, then reduction, then we will also take up rancidity and connected things. I think that will be that will turn to be our last video for this particular chapter. Thank you.